Good evening, Sigma Males. Welcome to another masterclass. In this series, we've been talking about certain topics and giving you a more active way that you can dive into these topics. Instead of just passively listening, this series is a way for you to actually make some actionable steps toward these ideas, these concepts, these personality traits, these things that you want within yourself. So that's why I created this series. And this series specifically is about finding your strengths. It's about finding clarity and understanding who you are. And through finding strengths, you're able to move past those weaknesses and understand that you can't focus too much on weaknesses. Everyone has a core set of strengths, and of course people should try to be a little bit well-rounded, but I find that focusing too much on weaknesses actually holds you back. So this series is all about finding your strengths. <clears throat> We're going to talk about finding your strengths as a man, as a Sigma male, and also as a citizen of the world, as a person in the world today, because those three things can be a little different. And we have to go through life with different filters and we all wear masks, of course. So we need to discover our strengths for various situations. So that's why you can sometimes see that someone can be really confident and feel strong and aware in one aspect of their lives and then have no confidence and be a total pushover totally confused in another area of their lives because they haven't looked at finding strengths as a holistic, a whole view of themselves. So before we get into this, if you like this series, you like this kind of video, take a moment to give me a thumbs up, tap that like button because it helps these ideas percolate, it helps these ideas spread, and it's not for my own ego validation, it's so that this content on this channel can grow and get bigger. So thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. Let's get into it. What kind of strengths should we really get into? What kind of strengths should we explore? Well, as a Sigma male, we have our own strengths. And many of us are very confused in the world right now and in our lives because we didn't go through the process of understanding the strengths of being a Sigma male. Many comments on this channel go something like this. Wow, I never knew that I was like this until two months ago, and now I'm understanding everything. So for me, when I hear those comments, it's very gratifying. And it's also important because it shows me that people have these capabilities within them, but they just don't understand themselves. They haven't found the strengths. And that's the sort of clarity about being a Sigma male that I want to help you find. The other reason, the other kind of strength I want to help you find is <clears throat> as a man in the world. Like I said, there are many masks and we all have to get comfortable discovering what's the best, ma best mask to wear for certain situations. Which strengths do we show in this situation? What kind of strengths do we need or do we have in a relationship? What kind of strengths do we have as a leader in our community? So that's why I'm creating this. I want to help you find various types of strengths and really understand who you are. Because my evolution as a person understanding themselves as a man has been very rocky. Many years, I didn't understand my strengths. I didn't know who I was. I tried to be too many things at once. And I thought that I could be everything. I thought that I could be this person who had many strengths, who was all well-rounded and could do anything. So I remember when I came back from living abroad for a couple of years, and I was 27, I moved back home in America, and <clears throat> I sat down at my desk one day and I thought, what can I do? What can I do in the world? Because I had just finished doing something that I, I thought was pretty good, but I wasn't totally satisfied. And now, mind you, this was about five or six years ago, so a lot has changed. And yet, I'm still on this journey of finding my strengths. It takes a long time. 
But five or six years ago, I sat down and I thought, what can I do? What would I like to do? And I wrote down dozens of things I could do, dozens of things that I thought would fit me. I wrote down airline pilot. I wrote down joining the Coast Guard, various military branches, being a wildlife uh, wildlife worker. I don't know what they're called anymore. I wrote down being in a corrections facility as a correctional officer. I wrote down entrepreneur. I wrote down teacher. I wrote down all these different things. Nonprofit worker, charity worker, guy who works for an NGO, architect. So all of these things at this one point in time, I thought, yeah, I could do those. I could do those. And why was that? Why did I think that I could have such broad potential? <laughs> so there are people in the world, there are Renaissance men through history who can occasionally do many things. They can be a guy who wears many hats and he can do quite well at them. Those people are very rare. You can be excellent at one thing. You can be great at a couple things. You can be good at a few things and then you can be okay at many things. And ultimately that's your choice. You can decide. And that comes down to knowing your strengths. And that's where I got lost because I didn't know my strengths. I didn't know that I had weaknesses as well because if you don't know your strengths, you don't know your weaknesses. So I thought, yeah, I'll be an airline pilot because I focused on my strengths. I thought, yeah, I can drive. I can drive a car really well. I can focus on this, but I didn't know my weaknesses of, Hey, there's a lot of math and physics and a lot of that left brain stuff. I think it's left brain or maybe it's right brain, that sort of <clears throat> critical analysis, logic kind of stuff. And by thinking that without weaknesses in mind, I was so delusional in thinking that I could be an airline pilot. Being a correctional officer, I thought, yeah, it would be a cool experience. I could be like that. I'm a, I'm a big guy. I'm strong, but I'm also empathetic and I can diffuse situations. Maybe I could really help people. But then I forgot about my weakness, my weakness of, hey, stressful environments stress you out. Toxic people stress you out. They, they wear on you. They grind you because I have that empathy. So thinking back when I didn't know my weaknesses, thinking about being a correctional officer, it's like that would have destroyed me. Being around literal prisoners, being around some of the most toxic people in the world. There are, many, there are many prisoners who are just good people who got wrapped up in, in bad things, but most of those people are in a very low energy, and it would have rubbed off on me because I don't have those sort of protective barriers. That's one of my weaknesses, not having strong barriers. So I went from broad potential, thinking I could do everything, thinking I could be a jack of all trades, and slowly over the course of five or six years, I started to understand that I have a very specific reality. So it was sort of a delusion in the past, thinking I could do all of those things. And it took me a long time. And the process I went through is something I want to share with you. So <clears throat> throughout my life, there have been things that I actually tried, thinking that I had a broad potential. So not just things that I imagined that day when I sat at my desk and thought of all the things I could do, but there were things that I actually wasn't good at. I think I talked about this in another video where I talked about work and I talked about how being in very fast environments, working in a bar was just not for me. I'm not that kind of person because I have my own speed. I have my own pace. I don't really like to be <clears throat> told to move a certain way and there's a certain independence and I don't like micro tasks unless I'm creating something, unless I'm really at the creative helm of a ship and I'm captaining some creative project, I don't like doing micro stuff. If you ask me to create something, write something, I'll spend hours working at one sentence or a paragraph. But if you ask me to do this tiny job because it's for the company that I'm not a part really, I'm not really captaining, I'm not leading, I'm going to hate it. So there are many things like that. That's, that's one of my weaknesses. 
There were many things like that I failed at. I've been fired from jobs. <clears throat> I've been miserable in jobs. I've been resentful. And I think this is a good way to show that we all have weaknesses as people. When you focus on your weaknesses and strengths in the workplace, it's easy to see that we all have weaknesses and that it's not easy to discover our real strengths or to have that clarity. But it's not so easy to understand that you have weaknesses as a person in society, as a man, all of that stuff. It's a little harder to let your ego accept that, hey, you have weaknesses in relationships and that you're not perfect and that you have strengths and you need to find the situations in which you are the strongest for you and for others. And I think about Sigma males when I think about that. I think about how if you don't really know who you are as a Sigma male, an introvert, an empath, whatever it is, <clears throat> you're going to try to chase various situations that are going to make you look like a fool and they're going to rob you of your self-esteem because you're going to be put in these places where you're showing weaknesses and not your own strengths. And that's just going to rob you. When you're not aware of who you are, as a Sigma male, you might say, well, I'm going to go join a rugby league because, you know, that's what alpha males do. And it's going to help me, that team dynamic. And if you're a Sigma male, maybe it's going to show just how weak you are at that team dynamic. And it's not going to be re really your ultimate path to growth if you actually want to be independent on your own. Maybe you would actually grow a lot spiritually as a person, emotionally, mentally, physically, if you were doing something like rock climbing or long distance solo running or anything like that. That's just an example. But when you don't know your weaknesses, then you're not able to see your own strengths. One book really helped me see where I was going with this unrealized and broad potential. It was Mastery. And in this book, I think it's written by George Leonard, he talks about the dabbler. So the dabbler is the opposite of the master. The master does something for a long time, and it goes like this. Early growth spurt as you improve, and then it dips back, back down, but you're at a higher level. And then another growth spurt, and then you're back down, but you're still at a higher level. And it's a slow little plateau, jump, plateau, jump. But the dabbler goes like this. Early growth spurt, goes back down, decides to quit, starts something new. And I'd been doing that for a long time in my life. Getting through what Seth Godin calls the dip. That dip after you have your first prog bit of progress. Getting through that has been very hard for me. And this channel is actually a manifestation of me getting through the dip. This is probably my 50th or 60th video. Think about that. Think about how many people are actually capable of producing 60 videos. I started a YouTube channel in January of 2016. It took me a few months to create two videos. And it was the ultimate dabbling. It was the ultimate first not knowing that that was my true strength. strength, And that was five years ago. When you have other options, you think that you could do something else. You're not really in a rush to create more videos. So two videos in a few months versus now. I'm on the path to mastery. This is my strength, communicating ideas in the written form and the verbal form, leading people, sharing stories, telling stories, being a storyteller. That's my strength. And I don't have other options. I'm not going to be a systems tinkerer. Okay. I'm not going to be like a Facebook architect or something. I'm not going to create the next big tech app. I have to sneeze. So bear with me. So my strengths include talking on camera, having a certain charisma. So knowing that allowed me to get past the path of dabbling and more 
into the realm of being a master. And I find that many of you might be dabblers. Many of people in the world right now are dabblers. And so I read that book and it, it was kind of an epiphany, but it happened many years ago. And it took me a long time to get to this place. So if you want to know how to get clarity, you're thinking, okay, I want this kind of clarity. I want this conviction. You look in my eyes and you think, he knows exactly what he wants to do. And this is everything so easy for him, looks so clear for him. You want to find those strengths you have. You want to truly know yourself, be able to go all in on something. How do you do it? How does it work? How do I, how do I get that clarity that allows me to just slice through the world with ease. Well, I have some opinions, I have some experiences I'll share with you, and these are my recommendations. These are not suggestions, these are not mandatory, this is just the path I took. So, travel at your own risk. Number one, understand that time and experience are going to give you a lot. So if you're a young man or a young woman, you're 18 and you think, damn, I don't know what I'm going to be. I don't know my strengths. Well, you're not supposed to know your strengths when you're 18. You're really not. And <clears throat> we idolize young people a lot in the world today. And I think it's bullshit. I think it's silly to idolize young people and forget about the fact that if you become somewhat cool and interesting by the time you're 40 or 50 in today's world, you are basically like the coolest person in the world because so many men just go along this, this different path and they choose the path of degradation. And so if you're actually someone who is in good shape, you're interesting, you're funny, you have a good job, you're happy and you're healthy, by the time you're 40 or 50, you represent the vast minority of people. So if you're young and you think, man, all these young people I'm looking around me, looking, looking at around me are famous and they're rich. Don't focus on that. It's terrible for you. And it's, it's one of those terrible things about society that I really hate. So understand that time and experience are going to teach you a lot. They're going to take you where you need to go naturally, slightly. As long as you make an, a decision to, to go along and grow on that time and experience, matrix, then somewhat naturally you're going to move in that perspective, in, in that direction. Elliot Hulse talks about seven year phases, <clears throat> and I don't know where he came up with this concept, but people grow in seven year phases, specific, specifically men. But he talks about when you're zero to seven, you're basically a blank slate. You're in that theta state and you're just absorbing information. You don't really have an identity. 7 to 14, you start developing an identity, but you're a kid. You're a child. You're not a blank slate, but you're a child. And then you've got 14 to 21. That's like your, your young man phase. Becoming a young man, exploring the world, exploring society, and starting to create an identity of who you are. For the first time between 14 and 21, you're really deciding who you are that you're your own person, that you have your own beliefs, that you might actually be someone when you're older. And then 21 to 28, he talks about how this is when you become a man. This is when you start to really decide that you want to do something. And you graduate from young man to sort of a man with a certain direction, with a stronger purpose and identity. But around 28, he talks about most men having this moment in life where they start to really think about what the hell am I doing? What the hell am I doing for the next part of my life as a man? What am I, what, am, what legacy am I going to leave? And maybe that's where you start to think about a family or a business or something like that. But you really start to have that wake up call. <clears throat> and I think a lot of my friends had this wake up call. I moved abroad when I was 28 again. <laughs> And I met a bunch of people who were around that age or about to have become that age. And we all hit that wall. We were, we were like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Because we've been chasing pleasure and fun without any real meaning. And so we all started to think about what are we going to do? 
So understand that it's going to come in phases and you're going to evolve naturally. And I didn't really truly understand my strengths until this this last phase that I'm in right now, the 28 through 35. Although it's very loose, it's not science. So I also tend to think that I'm, I'm kind of a late bloomer. I think I'm probably a few years behind emotionally other people. So maybe people had this moment in their lives when they were 28 and now I'm just kind of having it. The other way that you're going to understand your strengths and get some clarity in life is to fail and experiment. So if you're 18, I would recommend just trying a bunch of shit, trying stuff, <clears throat> doing lots of things, experimenting, tinkering, failing. Don't be afraid to screw up. I have screwed up so much in my life. And ultimately, it leads you to where you are. It's not just a platitude. It's not just something that Steve Jobs said to make people like his quotes. It really is the way. It's the only way you can really look back and connect the dots. He says something like that. But you don't get that because you don't fail. And we focus too much on people that just walked the easy path. Oftentimes I compare myself to a friend of mine who <clears throat> basically his path was great high school, Ivy League education, worked two years at a startup, started his own business. Boom, like that. Business went off. By the time he was 30, business is doing probably $10 million a year. And it was a direct path for him. Very simple. Not easy, but very simple. He had a lot of clarity. He knew his strengths. He knew his weaknesses. And we had all these conversations along the way. And it was really helpful. I really value his friendship. And he would help me see that I had certain strengths and I also had certain weaknesses. Sometimes other people know you better than yourself. And when you experiment like that, it helps you understand. That was my weakness. Okay, I'm not doing that again. But that was my strength, and I, I did really well there. And you do this for a few years, and it helps you push yourself towards your ultimate purpose. But when we look at it in the view of socially or romantically, experimentation helps you discover what you really like. So many people are chasing the wrong thing and they find out that they like something that they don't really like. So I think about dating and I think about having a diverse dating life for many men. Some men think this is right for them. And so they chase that because it seems from movies and stuff like that, that this is the path. And ultimately, some people might find that it's not fulfilling at all, but they've been chasing it. You can also think about chasing money or riches, fame, all of those different things. A lot of people chase those things because they don't know their strengths and they don't know their weaknesses and find out that they're not fulfilling. So there are also tools and tests that I used throughout my last five or six years that helped me understand what my strengths were, how to be very clear about them as well, to see them and to trust them. I read a book called Strengths Finders. This was probably when I was 27. And this book helped me understand my strengths. Very simple. I read Strengths Finders 2.0 and it was very helpful. It helped me realize that I'm really destined for a path of being on my own, being a creator, big picture, big vision, lots of creativity, and everything else is just kind of a waste of time for me. So that book really helped me. It comes with a test as well. It comes with a test that you take online after you read the book, and it helps you decide exactly what they are. And I find that with these kinds of things, it's helpful to do these things a few times in your life. <clears throat> if you're 21 and you do that, then you work a, few few, work a few jobs, a few years, and then you take the test again when you're 25 or something. And then you find out there's a different version of yourself. And it's that process of evolution that's going to bring you toward your ultimate strength. The other thing I, that really helped me was from 
Ty Lopez, actually. And Ty Lopez talks about Eulerian destiny. And while Ty Lopez is a very controversial figure, any person who puts out 67 videos and asks nothing in return, to me, is a, is a valuable source. That's someone to listen to. And I think in one of these videos, he talks about Eulerian destiny, how to find your Eulerian destiny. And basically, this is a four-circle Venn diagram. And in the center is what you should be doing. You've got, what did you grow up around? You've got strangers' feedback. You've got, what can you effortlessly talk about? And you've got what you've done the last two years, or what you've focused on the last two years. So for me, right now, I'm on YouTube. I'm instructing men. I'm talking about this topic, Sigma Male. So, what did I grow up around? I grew up around introversion. I grew up around movies. I had a, a family that was very much, <clears throat> had a sense of honor and integrity and a purpose. The people I grew up around had purpose. I grew up around travel and adventure. I grew up in a very multicultural neighborhood and city and suburbs at the same time we moved around a lot. So that influenced this Sigma spirit side of adventure and, and romance. What, was, what has strangers' feedback been, the other circle? Well, a lot of the times, like focus on the compliments you hear. So many compliments I've heard in the last 10 years have been something like, you have a great voice, you have a face for a camera, you have a good smile, you're deep, you are, my business friend, he said, you are deep and narrow, which is important for topics like this. If I wasn't deep and narrow, I would be maybe making very surface level videos that you guys wouldn't be able to really enjoy. You are, so more strangers feedback, you are a good writer, you are a good communicator of ideas, you are good with people. So all of this feedback has helped me get to my Eulerian destiny, as Ty Lopez has referred to it as, although I'm not sure who made this idea. What can I effortlessly talk about? I can effort, effortlessly talk about <clears throat> masculinity, social dynamics, love, sex, dating, women, men, adventure, history, personality, spirituality, psychology, philosophy, all those things. I love talking about them. So that's the third, the third circle. And then what have I done the last 10 years? Although my work has not really been about this topic, my free time, my hobbies have all been about this topic. These conversations with other men, dating, self-development, reading the things I've read, the things I've studied, have all been part of that final circle. And then you connect these four circles and you understand, okay, there's my destiny. So that really helped me a lot. Really helped me a lot. But when you think about finding your strengths in that way, your destiny, you also need to look at your own values. So if you do something like the Strengths Finders Test, you do something like Eulerian Destiny, and I recommend you do these. All of these things I recommend you think about doing because they helped me. You also need to define your values. If you think this is important, you need to have values very clearly drawn out. Values that are yours. Not other people's values, but very much your values. What do you value? Do you value comfort? Do you value certainty? Do you value security? Or do you value freedom, adventure, liberty, financial freedom? <clears throat> do, you, do you value love? Or do you value novelty? Do you value contribution, helping others? Do you value creativity? So really think about that. And if you're familiar with Tony Robbins, then you know that this topic setting your own values is very paramount to what he teaches. So define those values, because when you have your strengths, you have your destiny, and you have those values, all those things are going to lead 
to what you should ultimately, ultimately be doing. If your values are out of whack, your strengths are kind of a moot point. The next thing I've done, and many others have done this to help themselves, is some sort of Myers-Briggs personality test. And some people might find that these are bogus, they don't believe in it. I find that they're cool. They're a cool way to understand yourself. And through this test, I discovered that I'm typically somewhere in between an ENFJ and an INFJ. Sometimes I can be a little bit of an INTJ, ENTJ, if I'm in the right headspace. So understand that these things are fluid. But 16 Personalities has a great test, very cool, very cool animation, and it helps you understand. The process of taking this kind of test is good because it helps you understand who you are. Some people never think about it. Oh, I, I behave that way in this situation. I didn't even know that. I don't like deadlines. Oh, I didn't even know that. I've never thought about that. Do I work better by myself or am I creative? I didn't even think about this. So a lot of people would benefit just from doing that, let alone the fact that you can get a lot of great advice and <clears throat> analysis from the test result. And they'll share a lot of cool stuff. And I'll link all this stuff in the description below. And it gives you a really cool way of looking at who is like this, what kind of jobs are good for this, and, and what kind of strengths will I have? How do I be in a relationship? How do I exist with friendships in this manner? So I love this kind of test. But I will warn you not to get too caught up in letting it define exactly who you are. Let it be a piece of who you are. Let all these things be a piece of who you are. Let, this, let the idea of your values be a piece of who you are. Let the idea of your, your Eulerian destiny just be a piece of who you are. Your MBTI, Myers-Briggs personality type, that's just a piece of who you are. And you're always willing to change. Just like being a Sigma male or an empath. It's just a label. At any moment, you can take off that, that label, that mask, and you can be something else if you want to be. So I also learned a lot from books. I learned a lot from two books that I talk about endlessly over the last two years. I learned from The Big Leap and I learned from The Great Work of Your Life. And these two books really helped me define exactly what I should be doing. And they're very, they're very deep. They're very powerful books. I think The Big Leap is a good, more slightly under the surface one. And actually I started reading The, the Great Work of Your Life after someone recommended this book in the context of sobriety. So after you learn about all these things about substance abuse and actual the, the tactics and tips with, with just being more sober in your life, you also need something to guide you. You need a great work of your life. And I, find, I found that this book really helped me define my purpose. And he has a gr bunch of great examples in that book about people who went in on their great work of life. People like Henry David Thoreau, um, I think Beethoven was one of them, Susan B. Anthony, another poet, I can't remember all of them, but he, he talks about all these different characters, Gandhi, he talks about, and how they all shared this same path, and he breaks down the path of coming into your great work of your life, and he blends it very well with the book, the Bhagavad Gita, and how the Bhagavad Gita is really a book about understanding what work you're supposed to do in the world. And it's a beautiful book. It's amazing. I highly recommend it because it helped me understand how to take those strengths and turn them into what the hell I'm supposed to do in the world with my work. Not work, but your work. The thing you dedicate your life to. The thing you make your life. So there are also deep things, deep journeys, which I have seen other people use to a lot of success to get clarity in life, to understand their strengths. But I think you need to consider these as tools, not necessarily the path. Don't think that you're going to do one of these and wake up the next day, wow, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Things like plan medicines. A lot of people gain a lot of clarity, discover more about themselves through plan medicines. I've had good experiences on some, but after a certain 
number of times doing them, it's like this. When you receive the call and you get the message, you can hang up the phone. And I find that certain things like plant medicines or certain vision quests or certain types of exploration, travel, they're all helpful, but soon you just, you get the message. You don't need to do it anymore. You can put the phone down and you can focus on the work. So I mentioned vision quests. You can imagine vision quests as like this thing, this rite of passage that you have to go through as a young man. <clears throat> and it's something you do where you remove certain comforts and distractions so that you're able to focus on the bigger picture and receive some sort of message from your subconscious, great insight from beyond, because modern life kind of sucks for that. It really sucks for that. We're connected to phones all the time. We're always in conversations. There's no real depth. There's no real relationship with yourself. And I find that a vision quest can be a three-day thing or it can be a long, drawn-out pseudo-vision quest. So an example, I've done long fasts. They've been very good for my own clarity. I've done 72-hour fasts where I don't eat for 72 hours. I've done nature walks. I've done those kinds of things very short, kind of acute vision quests, but I've also done long vision quests, like moving to another country and living there for three years while I figured out my life, while I figured out how to navigate the world. And that was like a long vision quest for me. So understand that there's kind of two versions of it. But they all tap into the idea of austerity and challenge, basically removing something removing distractions and comforts while also challenging you at the same time. And it's going to move you toward a place of not necessarily discovering strengths, but trusting your strengths, seeing that, hey, I'm really good in this situation. I did well, and I did well because I was able to be charismatic and to be creative and resourceful and various other strengths you might have. Some people might get a lot of help from sp different spiritual practices, religion. Maybe that gives you guidance, that gives you clarity, that helps you find your strength. Some people might use a zodiac sign. Sometimes I fall back on my own zodiac sign. It's fine, like I said, use those tools if, if they help you. I'm an Aries, so sometimes I have to think, okay, what are Aries good at? We are independent, we're confident, we are leaders. And what are they weak at? impatient, moody, sensitive. And when I have bad days, I can look at that and think, okay, I'm just being my Aries. Don't need to freak out about it. I'm not broken. So they can help you if, if you really want. And the last thing is that real internal work as a habit, meditation, guided meditations. I have guided meditations on my channel, <clears throat> Mindful Wave Studio soon to be called Beyond Bold Minds, and I have guided meditations there about various things. One of them is, is clarity in your life. Um, I'll link that one as well. And in this meditation, it's an eight hour guided meditation that helps you get clarity in your life. And eventually on this channel and on the website, sigmaspirit.com, I'll probably have one for free, or maybe I'll offer it at a pretty low price. I'm not sure. It depends on how much work I put into it. And yeah, so those, those guided meditations really help you get clarity on your strengths and who you are, receive messages from higher powers, various things like that. I truly believe in that kind of stuff. Your subconscious mind is very powerful. People don't understand that. They downplay your own subconscious mind because they're so disconnected from it. Uh, Ian Stanley, he has a guided meditation called the Second Self Meditation. I've used this a lot. It's where you sort of go on this journey, you defeat these obstacles, and then ultimately you receive a message from your higher self. And it's really powerful. I always get great insight from it. So that's the importance of clarity, is finding your strengths, trusting those strengths and being able to know what your weaknesses are. Let me know what you think of this video in a comment. 
for now you have a lot of homework to do. I gave you resources. I gave you exercises to try if you want to find your strengths. And I thank you for watching this, this master class on clarity, finding strengths, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.